All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about the factorial of a matrix. So hopefully after this video, you'll be like, what the factorial? All right, so in particular, let's calculate the factorial of 1, 2, minus 1, 4. And before doing that, let's think what properties we would like the factorial to satisfy. First of all, we need the analog of 0 factorial equals 1, which in the matrix world just becomes the factorial of the 0 matrix should be the identity matrix. That's one on the one hand. On the other hand, we would like the factorial of A, whatever this is, to be the same as A times the factorial of A minus 1, which here becomes A minus the identity. So keep this in mind when we'll do our derivation. And so now, in order to calculate this, let's think how to do this. Well, there is one very useful method to calculate weird functions of matrices, which is diagonalization. So let's try to diagonalize 1, 2, minus 1, 4. And for this, let's first find the eigenvalues. So let's do the determinant of a minus lambda i. So the determinant of 1 minus lambda, 2 minus 1, 4 minus lambda, you calculate that. So 1 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda, and then plus 2, which I believe becomes lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 4 plus 2. So lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6, which becomes lambda minus 2 times lambda minus 3. You set that equal to 0, and you essentially get that the eigenvalues are lambda equals 2 and lambda equals 3. And then for each eigenvalue, you find a corresponding eigenvector. So I'll just do it for lambda equals 2. Here, all you need to do is calculate the null space of a minus 2i which just means plug in lambda equals 2 here. So here the null space of 1 minus 2, 2 minus 1, 4 minus 2. And that becomes the null space of minus 1, 2, minus 1, 2. Oh, how nice. They simplify. So that's good. And that becomes the null space of minus 1, 2, 0, 0. And then you can set up the system and set it equal to zero, or just think which combination here would give you zero. Well, two times minus one plus one times two is zero. So essentially, this just becomes the span of two one. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, let's now do it for lambda equals one, lambda equals three. And it turns out for lambda equals 3, using the same technique, you get the span of 1, 1. Okay, so what does that tell you? It tells you that the original matrix 1, 2, minus 1, 4 is PDP inverse. So 2, 1, 1, 1. So you put your eigenvectors together, then the eigenvalues 2, 0, 0, 3 and 2, 1. 1, 1 inverse. So this is the matrix, and now the question is, what is the, um, what is love? No, what's the factorial? Or very easy, the factorial of this matrix. All you need to do is put factorials to your eigenvalues. Just like exponentiating, just like taking sines and cosines, you just do it at the diagonal entries. So what this becomes, it's 2, 1, 1, 1. Then 2 factorial is 2, 0, 0, 3 factorial is 6. And then the inverse here, very nice, because the determinant is 1. So this becomes 1, 2, minus 1, minus 1. And then you calculate this, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, minus 2, minus 6, and 12, and Little bit. You do the messy algebra, so 4 minus 6, that is minus 2, minus 4 plus 12, that becomes 8, 2 minus 6, that is minus 4, and then minus 2 plus 12, that is 10. So the factorial 
of 1, 2, minus 1, 4, it's minus 2, 8, minus 4, 10. Now, this is all in good, but we really need to check if it actually satisfies the properties that we want. And first of all, let's just quickly check this zero factorial definition. Well, zero factorial is zero, zero, zero factorial. And remember, for diagonal matrices, you just put the factorial in the diagonal entries. So it's zero factorial, zero, zero, zero factorial, and that becomes one, zero, zero, one, which is the identity. So this thing is satisfied, but more importantly, do we have that one, two, minus one, four factorial? Is that the same as one, two, minus one, four times one, two, minus one, four minus the identity? So do we have that a factorial equals a times a minus i factorial? Well, for a minus i, you just subtract 1 from the uh, main diagonal, so 0, 2, minus 1, 3. And now we just need to calculate the factorial of this. But here's a nice thing. 0, 2, minus 1, 3, because we shifted it by the identity matrix, it turns out that the eigenvector stayed the same. So it's still, what was it? It's still 2, 1, 1, 1, but just the eigenvalues get shifted by 1. So it's not 2, 0, 0, 3, but 1, 0, 0, 2, and then 2, 1, 1, 1, inverse. And again, to find the determinant, the, uh, it's called the factorial, you just put factorial on the eigenvalues. And here's a small miracle happening, actually, just a little coincidence. So 2, 1, 1, 1, 1 factorial is 1, 0, 0, 2 factorial is 2, and then 2, 1, 1, 1 inverse. But look, this is actually the same as the, same as the original matrix. So it's 0, 2, minus 1, 3. So there are actually lots of matrices whose factorial is the same as the matrix itself. And this has to do with the fact that 1 factorial is 1 and 2 factorial is 2. So really, all we need to check, is it true or not that 1, 2 minus 1, 4 factorial is the same as 1, 2 minus 1, 4 times 0, 2 minus 1, 3? Well, let's do the calculation. So we get minus 2 and then 2 plus 6, 8, and that's minus 1. Uh, plus 4, no, sorry, uh, 0 minus 4, so just minus 4, and lastly, 2 plus 12, which is 10. Do we have this equals to that? Yes, indeed, because we just calculated before, a couple of steps before that the, uh, um, the factorial is here. All right. So indeed, this is true, and, you know, this is kind of general method. If it's diagonalizable, put the uh, factorial on the diagonal entries. If it's not, use the hold on canonical form. But there is one little thing that you might still probably think about. Because here, well, we could put factorials because the eigenvalues were um, natural numbers. What if the eigenvalues are just real numbers or maybe even negative real numbers? Well, no problem. The only difference is instead of using n factorial, you would use the continuous version of the factorial function, which is the gamma function. So in general, instead of using n factorial, you would use gamma of n plus 1. Well, I would like to remind you the gamma function is an integral from 0 to infinity of x to the z minus 1, e to the minus x dx. So if, for instance, you have a matrix A, which is p, lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2, p inverse, then to calculate the factorial, you would put lambda 1 factorial, lambda 2 factorial, but instead of that, you, you would use the gamma function. So it would be p of gamma of lambda 1 plus 1, 0, 0, gamma of lambda 2 plus 1. 
T inverse. And last but not least, I know I've been saying that for the last 50 times, but if you know a little bit of complex analysis, there's actually also an integral way of defining the factorial, which is kind of sort of similar to Cauchy's integral formula, namely to calculate the factorial of A, you could also do 1 over 2 pi i times the integral over some contour c of the gamma function of z plus 1 and kind of divided by z minus a, which here is z i minus a factorial dz, where what is c is just some contour, actually any contour that encloses all the eigenvalues of a. And this is a little bit uh, the subject of functional analysis, which I invite you to study. It is very, very interesting. And in fact, there's a functional analysis overview on my channel, which you're welcome to check out. All right, I hope you liked this little factorial extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.